The first four parables are all related to the farm. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9, Paul says, Ye are God's farm, ye are God's building. In this chapter, we see that God's farm eventually produces gold, silver, and precious stones. How mysterious it is that the produce of God's farm becomes gold, silver, and precious stones, the materials for God's building. God's farm produces the things of life, and these things of life become the materials for God's building. Thus, God's farm is for God's building. In the first four parables in Matthew, we have the life growing, and in the next parable, we have the treasure hidden in the field. The treasure must be made up of gold, silver, and precious stones, probably mainly precious stones. In the following parable, we find the pole. The new Jerusalem is built with gold, precious stones, and pole. Gold is the material of the city proper, and precious stones and pearl are the two other building materials for the city of God. In the first four parables, the Lord revealed the life that grows Christ into the kingdom. In the next two parables, he revealed the matter of transformation for beauty. This brings us back to the basic thoughts of the Bible, life and beauty. The parables in Matthew 13 reveal the matters of life and beauty. Life is Christ himself as the seed sown into our humanity. This life grows within us, growing Christ into the kingdom. The growing of this life eventually produces precious stones and pearls. After spending much time on Matthew 13, I found that its basic thought is the same as that of First Corinthians 3. In both chapters, we have God's farm and God's beauty. The first four parables are related to God's farm for growing Christ into the kingdom. And the following two parables are related to transformation for producing precious materials for God's building. If we are not impressed with this matter, we shall not be able to understand the fifth and sixth parables. We have consulted a number of books on Matthew 13, but none of them touch the depth of this chapter. None of the interpretations given in those books satisfy us. Even the impentant says that the treasure hidden in the field is the kingdom and that the pearl is righteousness. For in chapter 6, verse 33, we are told to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. The teaching prevalent among the brethren did not get into the depth of this chapter. Although the impentant saw that the treasure hid in the field referred to the kingdom, he was not clear about the pearl. In this message, we need to consider these two parables in a definite way. The kingdom hidden in the God-created world. Verse 44 says, The kingdom of the heavens is like a treasure hidden in the field, which a man found and hid, and his joy goes and sells all, whatever he has and buys that field. The treasure hidden in the field must consist of gold or precious stones, the materials for the building of the church and the new Jerusalem. Because... The church is the practical kingdom today, and the new Jerusalem will be the kingdom in the manifestation in the coming age. Therefore, the treasure hidden in the field signifies the kingdom hidden in God's created world. The kingdom of the heavens being like a treasure hidden in the field. The field in verse 44 is the earth, which signifies the world created by God for his kingdom. In the Bible, the earth signifies the world created by God, and the sea signifies the world corrupted by Satan. The earth also signifies Israel, the Jewish nation, because Israel was chosen by God, separated by God, and placed by God in a specific situation. Hence, the Jewish people stand before God as the earth created by Him. Based upon the same principle, the sea also signifies the Gentile world, for the Gentiles are the people corrupted by Satan. 
Therefore, in the Bible, the earth and the sea stand for two things each. The first four parables in Matthew 13 provide a clear picture of so-called Christianity. After giving forth these parables, the Lord privately spoke to his disciples the parables of the treasure hidden in the field and the pearl from the sea. If we understand the significance of the earth in the Bible, we shall know that the treasure hidden in the field must be the kingdom, and that the pearl produced out of the sea must be the church. The kingdom is truly treasure to the Lord. How precious it is in His sight. The church is also a valuable pearl to Him. The Lord is continually seeking two things, the kingdom as the treasure and the church as the pearl. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 27 says that Christ will present to Himself a glorious church without spot, wrinkle, or any such thing. This is the church as a beautiful pearl produced out of the Gentile world. Chapter 1 of Genesis says that God created the earth and that he created man in his own image with the intention that man would exercise his dominion over the animals, the fowl, and the fish. This is the kingdom on earth. However, man failed. But Psalm 8 follows with a prophecy. Verse 1 of this psalm says, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, when the earth is God's dominion. His name will be sanctified and made excellent on the earth. Speaking of man, Psalm 8, 6 says, Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. The following verses reveal that man has dominion over the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea. Hebrews 2 reveals that the man described in Psalm 8, firstly, is Christ. Christ is the man man who brings in God's dominion to earth and makes God's name excellent on earth. Then this man is Christ's body. This is the treasure on earth, the kingdom. Daniel 2 indicates that the earth will be under various forms of worldly power, but that Christ will be the stone coming from heaven to smash these worldly powers. This stone will eventually become a great mountain filling the entire earth. The stone is Christ, and the great mountain is Christ and large to be the universal kingdom of earth on earth. All this is related to the treasure in the earth. Revelation chapter 11 verse 15 says, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. This will take place at the time of the millennium, when the whole earth will be Christ's kingdom. This surely is the treasure hidden in the field. Verse 44 says that the kingdom of the heavens is like a treasure hidden in the field, which a man found and hid, and in his joy goes and sells all, whatever he has, and buys that field. The man here is Christ, who found the kingdom of the heavens in chapter 4 verse 12 to chapter 12 verse 23, hid it in the cross in chapter 16 verse 21, chapter 17 verse 22 to 23, chapter 20 verse 18 to 19, and chapter 26 verse 1 to chapter 27 verse 52, to sell all he had and buy that view, to redeem the created and lost earth for the kingdom. Christ first found the treasure when he came out to minister, declaring, Repent, for the kingdom of the heavens has drawn near. When the Jews' rejection of the Lord reached its peak, he forsook them. From that time over, he hid the treasure. Then he went to the cross to buy not only the treasure, but also the field, and he thereby redeemed the earth created by God. Christ went to the cross to redeem the God-created earth because within the earth there was the kingdom, the treasure. For the kingdom, for this treasure, Christ redeemed the earth created by God. In order for him to have the kingdom on earth, he must redeem the earth because it had been polluted and damaged by Satan's fall and by man's sin. The Lord sold all that he had and bought the earth, that is, he sacrificed all he had on the cross to redeem the earth for the treasure of the kingdom. No doubt, this kingdom is realized in the church life, but its manifestation is related to the redeemed nation of Israel.
During the millennium, the earth will become the kingdom of Christ. At that time, the nation of Israel will be the center of Christ's kingdom. Hence, the kingdom is mainly related to the nation of Israel and involved with Israel. The church produced out of the Satan corrupted world, the kingdom of the heavens being like a merchant seeking fine poles. Verses forty five and forty six say again, the kingdom of the heavens is like a merchant seeking fine poles, and finding one pole of great value, he went and sold all. Whatever he had and bought it, the merchant in verse forty five is also Christ, who was seeking the church for his kingdom. After finding it in chapter sixteen, verse eighteen, and chapter eighteen, verse seventeen, he went to the cross and sold all he had and bought it for the kingdom. The heavenly king's work, in verse forty six, we see the heavenly king's work. In gaining the one pearl of great value, at the cross he sold all, whatever he had, and bought that pearl. The pearl produced in the death waters, the world filled with death by the living oyster, the living Christ, wounded by a little rock, the sinner, and secreting its life juice around the wounding rock, the believer, is also the material for the building of the new Jerusalem. Since the pearl comes out of the sea, which signifies the world corrupted by Satan, it must refer to the church, which is mainly constituted with regenerated believers from the Gentile world, and which is of great value.